Somebody's already got their hands on what looks to be a DJI Air 3S drone and it hasn't even been announced yet. Earlier this week, Quadro News posted this video on X, formerly known as Twitter. What do you think? Can we stop calling it Twitter yet or is it too soon? How long was Prince formerly known as Prince? And what can only be described as a video filmed with a potato, Igor shows what appears to be an unreleased DJI Air 3S fly more combo being unboxed and shown off. In the bag looks to be the same RC2 that we've been using with previous DJI models, a multi-battery charger, and probably an ND filter case, considering this is a fly more combo. The original Air 3 was announced back in July of 2023 and featured a dual camera system providing pilots with the ability to switch between both a wide and a telephoto lens at any given time. The alleged Air 3S looks to be sticking with this design, but adding a potentially larger camera sensor, possibly one inch, which could improve the drone's low light performance and image quality. Also noticeable is what appears to be a forward-looking LiDAR sensor, which could be used for either subject tracking or possibly obstacle avoidance in low light situations. The DJI Air series has traditionally been segmented between both the Mini and the Mavic series drones with a typical takeoff weight around 700 grams to keep the drone portable and under the European drone C1 weight limit at 900 grams. The Air series, which is targeted at traveling creators, is meant to be faster, more wind resistant, and have a better camera system than the Mini but not to cannibalize the sales from the more professional oriented Mavic series, which has the three dedicated cameras and professional video codecs. Well, of course, nothing is confirmed yet and we'll have to wait until the launch day on October 15th. We're pretty confident that this is what DJI will be unveiling next week. Also leaked by Jasper Ellens on X, a photo of what appears to be a handheld tracking beacon that could enable subject tracking without having to carry a bulky controller while still allowing you to take off adjust the drone's position and return to home in an emergency. Stay tuned to our channel for more information about the Air 3S and of course our reaction to the official details on launch day. Let us know in the comments what you think about this new drone. Are you considering buying it right away or does it have a future in your drone bag? If you are planning on getting the Air 3S as your first drone, don't forget to check out our drone courses that will help you get quickly licensed to fly and make some cash to pay back that drone as fast as possible. A team of engineering students at the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology in Calgary are putting together a drone that will be able to collect space debris in space. The idea came to life when the leader of the team, Sam Aurelia, heard from a friend that they had a chunk of space debris come hurtling at them while in an airplane, resulting in an emergency landing. The project is part of the Canadian Reduced Gravity Design Challenge, which is a competition that challenges students to plan research and build small drone experiments. Designed to operate in the microgravity conditions similar to space, the prototype drone will ride on the Canadian National Research Council's version of the Vomit Comet, a Falcon 20, that will fly a series of parabolic dives to allow the plane to go weightless for enough time to test the drone. One of the challenges they needed to overcome was allowing the drone to stay very stable without a constant source of gravity, as most drones rely on accelerometers and solid state gyroscopes in order to hover. The goal of this project is to develop a platform that could be scaled up to collect debris in space if everything works out. For this test, in the end, the students were able to learn and experiment with every part of the drone, and they're so far thrilled with the final results. Personally though, we wonder if there might be a use case for parts that we see in traditional drones, but it's a bit out of our league. We're not really space engineers or rocket drone pilots, we're drone pilots. So check it out, more links in the details. In the category of things you'd think we'd already have seen, recently a drone captured footage of the world's longest known set of dinosaur tracks, permanently fossilized at the West Gold Hill Dinosaur Track Site in Ure, Colorado. The video gives the audience an aerial view of the tracks left by a sauropod, not to be confused with a sweet pod, and the tracks themselves are estimated to be over 150 million years old and over 316 feet in length. While these tracks were known about since 1945, apparently the landowner didn't know that they were dinosaur tracks until 2021. Recently, this site was opened to the public back in April of this year, allowing visitors to connect and learn more about the beasts that came before them. The land is now federally protected and it's critical to remember that you can't just go and fly your drone anywhere there. You're gonna to need to be respectful and not only comply with the regulations of the park rules themselves, 
but often sites like these are gonna be protected and the use of drones will be prohibited to the general public. Get permission first, of course. In the United States, of course, it's important to remember that even pilots of micro drones like the Mini need to obtain their trust certificate to fly and if you wanna fly for any commercial purpose, you're gonna to need to obtain your part 107 FAA pilot certificate, even if you're just making them for videos for YouTube. If you're looking to get your FAA part 107, check out our course in the link below. Canada's most popular aviation bathroom reader, the Aeronautical Information Manual, has been updated to the second 2024 edition this week. Regulations don't really apply to micro drones, right? Well, the updated drone specific chapter, the RPA, has been updated to include clarification around landholder permission, the criminal code, and other applicable regulations such as the Endangered Species Act to consider when flying any drone. Other updates include more clarification on the Canadian airspace classification, what to do if you enter controlled airspace accidentally, what is considered an advanced operation, and of course, updated instructions for how to apply for a special flight operation certificate. We're gonna be hosting a live drone recency seminar on October 21st, 2024 for Coastal Drone Pro subscribers and those who purchased the recency seminar from us within the last six months. So get signed up now and join us live to update your drone pilot recency for yet another 24 months. If you're interested in this, we've left a link in the description and check it out and make sure you get signed up before the 21st for further details. If you miss it, don't worry, it will be recorded and you'll be able to download it after the fact. Now, drones can take off from Edmonton International Airport and fly up to 10 kilometers away to a nearby health clinic in Leduc, Alberta to deliver critical medicine and other prescription needs. The clinic is owned by the Montana First Nation and once more testing is complete, the drones will then actually be able to fly directly to the community instead of just to the clinic. The drones are flying autonomously from a control center in Toronto, but there is a pilot nearby that's able to take control of the drone at any point if an emergency occurs. Members of the Montana First Nations are excited about this service and are looking forward to the future advancements of the technology and being able to access these goods quickly. We recently recorded a podcast about autonomous drones, so stay tuned to see that on our channel soon. If you wanna carry a payload like these drones, you'll need to comply with the transportation of dangerous goods and the air transportation regulations, and you most likely need to apply for a special flight operations certificate for beyond line of sight and probably heavy lift operations. If you're considering this, check out our past videos on the subject or reach out to us for more details. Well, that's it for this week. Make sure to come back every Friday for a weekly dose of drone news and or else we're gonna have to burn Finn's Hawaiian shirt.